The story was the account of an African farmer who heard tales about other settlers who had made millions by discovering diamond mines. And these tales so excited the farmer that he could hardly wait to sell his farm and search for diamonds himself. So he sold his farm and spent the rest of his life wandering the vast African continent, searching unsuccessfully for the gleaming gems which brought such high prices on the markets of the world. Finally, in a fit of despondency, broke and desperate, as I remember the story, he threw himself into a river and drowned. Now, meanwhile, the man who had bought his farm one day found a large and unusual stone in a stream which cut through the property. And the stone turned out to be a great diamond of enormous value. And he then discovered that the farm was covered with them. And it was to become one of the world's richest diamond mines. The first farmer had owned literally acres of diamonds, but had sold them for practically nothing in order to look for them elsewhere. If he'd only taken the time to study and prepare himself, to learn what diamonds looked like in their rough state, and had first thoroughly explored the land he owned, he would have found the millions he sought right on his own property. The thing about this story that so profoundly affected Dr. Conwell and subsequently millions of others was the idea that each of us is, at this moment, standing in the middle of his own acres of diamonds. If we will only have the wisdom and patience to intelligently and effectively explore the work in which we're now engaged, we'll usually find that it contains the riches we seek, whether they be financial or intangible or both. There's nothing more pitiful to my mind than the person who wastes his life running from one thing to another, forever looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, and never staying with one thing long enough to find it. No matter what your goal may be, perhaps the road to it can be found in the very thing in which you're now engaged. You see, the average man believes some businesses are better than others, instead of realizing the truth that there are no bad businesses. There are just those people who don't know enough to see the opportunities in the work they're in. No matter what our work happens to be, it's our business. We're the manager. If there seems to be no future or opportunity in it, it isn't always because it's not there, but perhaps only because we can't see it. A farmer once poked a tiny pumpkin into an empty jug. The pumpkin grew until it completely filled the jug and could grow no more. When the farmer broke the glass, he had a pumpkin exactly the size and shape of the jug. If we're not careful, each of us can do a similar thing. We can mistakenly poke ourselves into jugs that limit our growth. But it is we who do the poking, not the job, not the company, nor the territory, nor the economy, nor the times. We do it.